Nearly 1 million people per month around the globe search the term Sanpaku eyes on Google. This is most interesting because throughout history and various cultures, humans have held some pretty out of the box medical claims and treatments about the human body, but most especially the eyes. As the windows to our soul, some seriously not medical medical claims have been made about the eyes. For instance, in Bald's Leech Book, a medical textbook from around the 10th century, it suggests putting burnt periwinkle flowers and honey in the eyes for cataracts and to treat swollen eyes. Treat swollen eyes by taking a live crab, cutting its eyes out, throwing it back in the water, then applying its eyes on the neck of the man who hath need. Obviously, as an optometrist, I don't recommend either of those treatments, and as humans, let's leave the crabs with their eyes, people, seriously. But I digress. In today's video, let's talk about a common Japanese superstition called Sanpaku eyes. And by the way, I had no idea what this was before researching it for the video, so this is not a medical eye condition, but I'm an eye doctor and it's eye related, so let's investigate. Welcome back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Give a little tap on that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. Okay, so today is not a medical eye condition. This one is just for fun, but we're going to talk about Sampaku. Sampaku. It's a Japanese term meaning three white. So Sampaki was introduced into English by George Ashwana in the mid 1960s. It's generally referred to in English as Sanpaku eyes and refers to eyes in which either the white space above or the iris or below the iris is revealed. The medical condition in which sclera can be seen below the iris is called lower scleral show or inferior scleral show, or if it was above, it would be superior scleral show. And according to Chinese and Japanese medical face reading, when the white part of the eye known as the sclera is visible beneath the iris, it represents physical imbalance in the body and is claimed to be present in alcoholics, drug addicts, and people who overconsume sugar or grain. Conversely, when the upper sclera is visible, it's said to be an indication of mental imbalance in people such as psychotics, murderers, and anyone rageful. In either condition, it's believed that these people attract accidents and violence. And I'm just gonna leave this photo of, of Charles Manson here. So a little about Sam Paku. In 1965, Osawa published the book entitled You Are All Sam Paku, but it was in the 90s that people came to know about the subject, and he became popular for talking about macrobiotics and the expression Sam Paku in the West. For those with this condition, he recommended diets rich in whole grains, vegetables, and dried fruits to lessen the effects. These guidelines were given because it's believed that those who have Sam Paku eyes are more likely to get sick and suffer fatal accidents. According to Brian Ashcraft, when a person gets old or sick, the iris starts to rise and the lower part of the eye becomes more evident. So this is indicative that something in the person is not quite right psychologically or physically. So let's talk about the main types of Sampaku. There's Sampaku yin. This is when the lower part of the eye called the sclera is most evident. Beliefs show that people with this kind of gaze show that the outside world poses some risk to him or her. These kinds of risks are sometimes tragic deaths, early deaths, and some examples of well-known people who had this characteristic were Princess Diana, Abraham Lincoln, JFK, James Dean, and John Lennon. John Lennon, who was murdered by a fan, spoke of the Sam Paku eye in one of his songs, I Sumasin? The artist died a tragic death, as well as others who've also had Sam Paku eyes. Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Elvis Presley, Indira Gandhi, Jim Morrison, Michael Jackson, among others. And Sam Paku means outside world, according to superstition that something bad can happen to that person. Isn't this crazy? Again, not medical. I'm not saying this as an optometrist, just for fun. Let's talk about Sam Paku Yang. That's when the upper part of the eye, the sclera, is more evident up above, and according to superstition, these people have explosive behavior and violent tendencies. They're more prone to causing barbarities with other people. An example that applies to this case, Charles Manson. This American criminal was known for his murders and for having created the sect called the Manson Family, 
and his followers also committed murders under his leadership. Sampaku Yang means inner world. This person can end up doing harm to others, according to superstition. And in Japanese culture, there's many myths and misconceptions about the Sampaku Eye, but there are still a few truths as well. The main truth is it doesn't really have any meaning in Japanese culture. So Sampaku Eyes are present currently in anime. If you've stopped to watch most of the anime films, you see that the lower part, they'll show a uh, Sampaku Yin the lower part being more evident, or even just a small black ball in the middle with the rest of the eye white. For some Japanese, having eyes like that are even charming for both men and women, and there's even personality traits that are attributed to those who have this look. So these are the characteristics often attributed to Sampaku, people who have a lot of attitude and spunk, well-focused people, people who are able to position themselves in difficult situations and kind of keep their cool, people who have a connection with spirituality, people who have a calmer side. This seems like a lot of different personality traits, honestly, but those are some of the ones that they associate with folks with Sampaku eyes. And then there's even doctors in Japan who will perform surgery to make their patients have Sampaku's eyes. So let's talk a little bit about superstition versus medical reality and cultural influence. If you just found out what Sampaku is, you probably just ran to the mirror to see if your eye is or is not Sampaku, and hopefully not superiorly, right? But you're not the only one. I did it too. Probably if your eyes are not, you feel relieved, but if you realize that your eyes are Sampaku, let me make you not worry about that. This is just one of several other superstitions that exist, and it really has no scientific proof. Good and bad things happen to many people every day and with many characteristics of their eyes. So, you know, we talk about macrobiotics and that diet would be needed to help people with Sampaku eyes not be prone to accidents, but in fact, a good diet is just a good idea for everybody. It helps all of us live a healthier life, but it doesn't prevent unforeseen events that may occur in our lives. This superstition is not even really taken seriously in Japan, which is where it was started. Some actual truths about Sampaku eyes, so it can be a sign of exhaustion or possible illness. It can be mistaken as eye conditions like ptosis and lagophthalmus. It can also be a sign of age as people who have been exposed to sun light for an extended period of time will have more visible sclera than those who have not been as exposed. So ptosis is a drooping lid. That's where your upper eyelid droops. It's also called blepharotosis and it changes the way the lid interacts with the eye. You can also have a lower lid that sort of droops low and it can even be actropian, a lid that pouts away from the eye. You can have lagophthalmus where your eye does not close completely and that could lead to this appearance of Sampaku eyes. There's another condition that I forgot to put in here, but I'll add it now, but proptosis. So we just made a video about thyroid eye disease for the channel, which I'll link above. And certainly in thyroid eye disease, if you have proptosis or an eye that sort of physically moved forward, you can have increased scleral show both upper and lower, giving you Sampaku eyes. So I hope you enjoyed learning about something a little bit different on today's video. Remember, this was not medical, it was just for fun. But let me know if you have ever heard of this superstition around eyes before. And if you have made it this far and you're not already subscribed, please do that right now because we post videos every single week and I wouldn't want you to miss one. That's gonna be it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed.